Today we will be looking at how to use trigonometric identities in order to manipulate equations. This is helpful in changing complicated trig functions into simpler ones, which will especially come in handy when you begin to learn derivatives and integrals. First, let's look at the equation secant squared times cotangent minus cotangent equals tangent. The thing to remember when manipulating trig functions is you always want to break the pieces down into the smallest units. Let's look at our first manipulative, which is secant squared. If we flip this over, we see that really secant squared is nothing more than secant times secant. So we will pull up two of our secant manipulatives. The next one we look at is cotangent. When we flip this over, we find that we get cosine over sine. When we pull up our cosine over sine, notice that the shape that they make is the same as the shape of the cotangent. Now we're subtracting another cotangent, so we remember that again, that's cosine over sine, and we don't want to forget our subtraction sign between them. Okay, looks like we're making progress. Now we want to look at our secants. If we flip over each of those, we see that secant is 1 divided by cosine. Since these are both fractions being multiplied, by, multiplied together, we can multiply the numerators and the denominators, and we will end up with 1 divided by cosine times cosine. So let's switch that out. Now we have 1 divided by cosine times cosine, times cosine divided by sine. Because our numerator are just being multiplied together, we can combine these fractions into 1 times cosine times cosine times cosine divided by sine times sine. We can now see that we can remove a cosine out of our numerator and denominator to be left with 1 divided by cosine times sine. When we look at how we're subtracting from that cosine over sine. Now these are two fractions being subtracted. What do we need in order to perform that operation? Common denominators. Since both denominators already have a sign in them, we want to have a cosine in the right-hand denominator. We're going to multiply the fraction on the right by 1, but we're going to multiply it by cosine over cosine. Now that these fractions have common denominators, we can perform the subtraction. So we will end up with 1 minus cosine times cosine all over sine times cosine. You might think now to take a cosine out of the numerator and the denominator. However, we have to remember that we have the subtraction sign here. So since we can't pull a cosine out of the 1, we can't pull it out of the other side. So cosine times cosine. Looks like there should be a simpler way to write that. We find another, another manipulative piece that has the exact same shape and also says cosine times cosine. Let's replace those. We notice that this has two cosines written on it and our dotted line down the middle. Usually that means that that's two pieces that can really be written as one. So if we flip over this manipulative, we see that we have cosine squared. Now we have 1 minus cosine squared over sine times cosine. 1 minus cosine squared. What does that make us think of? Our favorite trig identity is our Pythagorean identity, which says that sine squared times co plus cosine squared equals 1. In other words, 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. We have a sine squared manipulative. How lucky. Now we have sine squared over sine times cosine. I'm seeing sine in yellow on the top and sine in yellow on the bottom. There must be a way to simplify that. Because remember, our end result we are looking for is tangent. Well, if we flip this piece over, we remember that sine squared is sine times sine. So let's bring up two of our sine pieces. Now we have sine times sine divided by sine times cosine. Clearly, we can see that we can remove a sign from both the numerator and the denominator. We are left with sine over cosine. 
Now if you forget that this is in fact tangent, let's look at the shapes. See how they both have jagged tops and bottoms? Well if we turn over this tangent, voila, it is sine over cosine. So there we go, all the way from secant squared cotangent minus cotangent to simply tangent.